When an archaeologist finds something, it's the beginning of a story that might not have an ending. The ending of the story would come with our full understanding of the discovery, but full understanding isn't always possible. The same can be said of things discovered by scientists. Watch this video and see if you can unravel the mysteries of these puzzling finds. There's a set of ancient ruins called Baia in Bacoli, Italy, and they're a rich hunting ground for archaeologists. This was once a pleasure palace for the richest people in Rome, but the greatest mystery at the site isn't anything that the Roman super-rich left behind. It's the fig tree that's growing in its ruins. Fig trees aren't rare in this part of the world, but this one isn't like all the other fig trees in the region. It's growing upside down and seems to exist only to defy the laws of gravity. The tree's roots are in the ceiling of the arch it grows from, which is rumored to have been part of a villa belonging to Emperor Nero, the most hedonistic Roman of them all. Scientists have never been able to work out how the tree ended up in the ceiling or how it's managed to survive against all the odds without any obvious source of nourishment, and yet every year the tree bears figs. Some scientists are concerned that the growth of the tree is damaging the crumbling archway. But thus far, there's been no serious discussion about removing it. Sometimes treasure simply falls out of the sky. The Fukang meteorite looked like any other lump of space rock when it landed in the Chinese Gobi Desert. But when it was discovered and cut open in the year 2000, it revealed a gleaming honeycomb internal structure like nothing on Earth. The translucent crystals are made of olivine, and they sit in a web of nickel iron. When the sun shines through sliced off layers of the rock, it gives off an impression like looking through a stained glass window. It would have been nice if the people who found it had kept it in one piece, but it's been cut into bits and sold off a chunk at a time to the highest bidder. The largest piece, weighing just under 1,000 pounds, was auctioned for $2 million in New York City in 2008. If that's above your budget, you can buy a bunch of smaller pieces of the rock online for $50 per gram. The meteorite belongs to the Palisite class, which makes up only 1% of all the meteorites that land on Earth. But this one is by far the most beautiful. Like the legend of Robin Hood in England, the tale of Yasuke is a popular story told to children in Japan. But there's a big difference. Robin Hood is a work of fiction. Yasuke, the first ever African samurai, was very real. We know precious little about him, but what we do know of him is remarkable. He arrived in Kyoto in 1579, and his appearance stunned the locals. Not only was he black, a skin tone the Japanese of the time rarely saw, but he was over six feet tall. The average height of a male in the 16th century Japan was a little under five feet. To them, he'd have seemed like a giant. Just one year later, he was fluent in Japanese and was made a fully-fledged samurai by the feudal lord Oda Nobunaga. Normally, Japanese men had to train their whole lives to become a samurai. This mysterious African man had done it in a single year and is thought to be the first foreigner ever to be accepted into the ranks of the legendary warriors. Just three years after that, he vanishes from history completely Nobody knows who or where he was before he entered Japan, and nobody knows what happened to him afterwards. We don't even know his real name. Yasuke is a Japanese affectation. Our ancestors had many weird and wonderful burial traditions. If you were fortunate enough to be of ancient Egyptian nobility, you would likely be buried in a glorious tomb with a fine sarcophagus. If, on the other hand, you were a medieval peasant, you were more likely to end up discarded thoughtlessly in a pit. If you were very rich and lived in China during the 4th century, though, you might have ended up inside one of these incredibly ornate jade burial suits, weaved together with threads made from gold and silver. The first written record of the suits comes from the year 320 CE, although there's some anecdotal evidence that they were around a few hundred years before that. 
Not until 1968 did archaeologists confirm their existence by finding a real-life example. And when they found one, they found two. The two jade suits you see here belong to Prince Liu Shang and Princess Du Wan, his wife. And they date back to the Han Dynasty. It's thought that making a single one of the suits would have been 10 years worth of labor, even for a skilled jade smith. Why jade was chosen as the material is unknown. It's porous, and so the skeletons within the suits had almost crumbled away completely. Hunger stones are a curiously European invention. They tend to be made only in times of trouble, and they tend only to appear during times of trouble too. The most notable one that's come to light recently was found in the Czech Republic on the banks of the River Elba at the end of 2018. Water levels in the river were unusually low that year and revealed a message that's thought to have been carved into the stone by an innkeeper called Franz Meyer in 1904. The message is a simple one. It says, if you can read me, weep. The implication is that if the river's water has fallen to a level that's so low the message can be read, a drought is inevitable. There was a terrible drought in 1904 in Prague. Fortunately, the one in 2018 wasn't quite so pronounced. There were more businesses dependent upon the river in the early 20th century, so when it dried up, so did their income. Modern Prague is more capable of withstanding such an event, all hunger stones serve the same basic purpose, and the oldest known example is in Daishin, which is also in the Czech Republic. It's dated to 1417, but nobody knows who wrote it. Copper, also known as Sheikh El Balad, was a scribe in Egypt during the time of the 4th and 5th dynasties some 4,500 years ago. He wouldn't be considered a particularly significant scribe were it not for the exceptionally lifelike statue of him, which is the best preserved ancient wooden statue in the world. We don't know much about Copper's life other than that he was a lector priest and also an army scribe of the king. We don't even know what being an army scribe of the king actually entailed. Because of that, We'll never know what he did to deserve so fine a statue, when every other man of his rank had to make do with a fairly basic tomb. The Tomb of Copper was found in the necropolis of Saqqara by Auguste Mariette in the mid-19th century. The nickname Sheikh El Baled, which means head man of the village, comes from the Egyptian diggers who worked for Mariette. They thought that the statue was a dead ringer for the elder of the village they came from. The statue of copper, which is made from sycamore wood and depicts the scribe walking with the aid of a staff, is now in the Cairo Egyptian Museum. If you build a settlement on the water's edge, you run the risk of it one day ending up underwater. Earthquakes, tsunamis, or good old-fashioned erosion can do away with a city over a few hundred years. And that appears to be what did happen for the ancient Egyptian city of Thanis Heraklion. These days, the ancient city, founded by Alexander the Great himself, is off the coast of the canopic mouth of the Nile, submerged at a depth of more than 150 feet. Experts believe that it sank roughly 1,200 years ago. The undersea site is so enormous that it's still being studied and explored now, several years after its discovery. So far, marine teams have found more than 60 shipwrecks, hundreds of gold coins, and a range of statues and tablets. Curiously, some of the sculptures are inscribed with hieroglyphs that can't be translated, despite the fact that Egyptian hieroglyphs are generally easy for experts to decode. Other than the fact that hundreds of undersea creatures have made Heraklion their home, the site is incredibly well preserved. With a little imagination, it isn't difficult to imagine how it must have looked in its glory days thousands of years ago. A visit to the White Desert of Al Farfra in Egypt might be as close as you ever get to walking on the surface of an alien planet. There's something eerie about exploring the terrain here, 
where thousands of years of exposure to the elements have whipped and shaped the chalk rock into bizarre looking shapes. This is a place where your eyes can easily play tricks on you. Some people think that some of the stones have been carved to resemble animals, while others even see the faces or silhouettes of human beings. In reality, scientists are of the opinion that none of the stones and rocks here have ever been carved or shaped by human hands at all. But you'll also find plenty of people who disagree strongly with that assertion. To truly appreciate the full beauty of the White Desert, your best bet is to book an overnight camping trip and watch as the setting sun brings color and shadow to the landscape, creating new shapes in the process. It's incredible to think that this is only a few short hours away from the middle of Cairo. If you know which graveyards to look at in Rome, you might find a so-called catacomb saint or two. The strange existence of these bejeweled skeletons is connected to a fraud perpetrated by the Vatican between the 16th and 19th centuries. For reasons that nobody has ever explained, the Vatican ordered the exhumation of several skeletons from graveyards in Rome, dressed the bones up with fine garments and jewels, and had them shipped to Catholic countries around the globe as the supposed physical remains of saints. The skeletons became venerated objects in the countries they arrived in, often adorned with even more gold and jewelry. In some cases, the anonymous bones were even dressed up with crowns and robes like kings and queens. Many of them are now on display in Rome's catacombs, hence their modern-day nickname of Catacomb Saints. As historical curiosities go, they're some of the strangest religious objects of all time. Although the truth of their non-saintly origin is now known, the skeletons are still extremely valuable because of all the accessories they come with. Several are still held in private collections all over the world. Our next discovery is something worth writing home about. In fact, you could literally use it to write home because it's a writing set. The ancient set, which consists of a dish an amphora inkwell and a bone dip pen was found in Istanbul, Turkey in September 2022. With an estimated age of 1,600 years, it's the oldest complete writing set ever to be found anywhere in the world. The discovery was made during a planned dig at the Bathania archaeological site in Istanbul's Kukushkemeche suburb which has proven to be a rich hunting ground for archaeologists in recent years. Scientific analysis of the bone dip pen has revealed the presence of both red and black ink, which indicates that the set belonged to somebody important. Back in the days of the Eastern Roman Empire, red ink was reserved for use only by state officials. The set is both tiny and delicate, so it's nothing short of remarkable that it survived buried in the ground for so many years. It will be carefully preserved and studied before going on display at a nearby museum. Here's an amazing discovery from October 2022. It's a massive mosaic that dates back to the Roman era of Syria, containing panels that tell the story of the Trojan War. It's a remarkable find, and it's made all the more remarkable that it narrowly escaped being broken into pieces and sold on the black market by terrorists. The mosaic is 1,600 years old and was found inside the ruins of a 4th century building in Al-Rastan. It covers an incredible 1,300 square feet. It's thought that it was first found in 2015 and seized by Daesh, which controlled territories in the region at the time. In 2017, a figure representing the group listed the mosaic for sale, but fortunately it was bought by Lebanese business people who recognized its importance and donated it back to the Syrian state in 2022 when it was deemed safe to do so. Despite depicting the Trojan War, the mosaic doesn't contain any depictions of Achilles or the Trojan horse. Modern-day historians are increasingly convinced that Achilles was a mythical figure, 
and the Trojan horse was a metaphorical description of the deceitful tactics that Greek soldiers employed during the war. There are some places where you might reasonably expect to find an ancient burial ground, and there are places where you absolutely wouldn't. Finding one underneath a disused department store in Haverford West, Wales, falls into the latter category. Archaeologists were investigating what lay below the former Aki White building in the town when they found what they now believe to be the remains of a medieval-era priory called St. Saviour's, which was founded by an order of Dominican monks in 1256. This is a discovery that was first reported on October 11th, 2022. So, at the time this video was made, work was still ongoing at the site, and new discoveries were still being made. Thus far, archaeologists have identified the dormitories, scriptoriums, stables, and hospital of the old priory, but they're puzzled by the graveyard. Rather than being full of monks, it's full of people from all walks of life and all ages, including children. Some of those buried here have head wounds of the kind that would be caused by arrows or musket balls in battle. One theory is that people who died in a nearby battle were brought to the Priory for burial as an emergency measure, but historians are unaware of any such battle from this era. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!